Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's an example where finding the limit is a little bit more difficult than the example in the previous video. We have the function f of x equals x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. And the question is, what is the limit of that function as x approaches 1? And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to evaluate it. So uh, this would be equal to when we plug 1 in for x, we get 1 minus 1 divided by 1 squared minus 1, which is equal to 0 divided by 0 which is equal to, well, we would call that undetermined. Because 0 divided by 0 is undefined. So it looks like we cannot find the limit, or maybe there is no limit. But actually, that is not true. There's actually a valid limit. And so let's see how we can figure that out. We're going to plug in some values in the table. We're going to find some values for x. And we're then going to find the corresponding values for the function of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick values and let them get closer and closer and closer to 1 to see what will happen to f of x. So let's say we start with the value for x equals 2. When x is equal to 2, we get 2 minus 1 divided by 2 squared minus 1. So that would be f of x would be 2 minus 1 divided by 2 squared minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is 1 divided by 3, which is equal to 0 0.333. All right. Now, let's get it a little bit closer to 1. Let x equals 1.5. So with x equals 1.5, we have f of x is 1.5 minus 1 divided by 1.5 squared minus 1. For that, I will grab a calculator, see what we get. So we get 0.5 divided by 1.5 squared minus 1 equals, and so we get 0.4. All right, now let's get a little closer to 1 again. Let's try 1.1. And so here we get 1.1 minus 1 divided by 1.1 squared minus 1. Let's see what that is equal to. So we get 0.1 divided by the quantity 1.1 squared minus 1 equals, and now we get 0 0.476, 0 0.476. How about 1.01? .01? That means f of x will be 1.01 .01 minus 1 divided by 1.01 squared minus 1. And now let's see what we get this time. So 0 0.01 divided by 1.01 squared. Oop, let me try it again. Uh, 0 0.01 divided by the quantity 1.01 squared minus 1 equals, and now we get the value of 0 0.4975. Now more and more, this is beginning to look like to me that as the value of x gets closer and closer and closer to value 1, the function gets closer and closer and closer to, looks like 0 0.5, which means that ultimately, when I get the number x to be equal to 1, I would suspect that the function will be equal to 0 0.5, which would mean that the limit as x approaches 1 of this function should equal 0 0.5, not 0 divided by 0. So that's kind of interesting. This is where simply evaluating the function at the limit is not the same as actually finding the limit. In the previous example, they were the exact same value, but in this case, that's not the case. So how do you show that the limit actually is 0.5? Of course, what we can do is we can take the number smaller and smaller. We can make the number get closer and closer and closer to the value 1. For example, what if we take a calculator and we plug in the value 1.00001 like that and you'll see that when you do that you get a value very 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 close to 0.5 which would indicate that in the limit as x does approach 1 it should equal 0 0.5 now another way of finding the solution to that is to do the following we can say that well we take the limit the limit as x approaches 1 is of of x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, notice that the denominator can actually be factored. So this would be equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by the quantity x minus 1 times x plus 1. Then notice that this and this can be cancelled. So this becomes 1 over x plus 1. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 divided by x plus 1 and now we can go ahead and plug in the value 1 for x because now we don't have a 0 in the denominator when we do that so this is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 1 which is equal to 1 divided by 2 which is equal to exactly 0 0.5 so we can see here that the limit of this function as x approaches 1 is indeed 0 0.5 
just like we suspected when we used this particular approach. So at first sight, you may have the situation where if you plug in the value into the function, you get an indeterminate or, or an invalid result. But then when you plug in values and you let the value of x get closer and closer and closer to 1, eventually, essentially in the limit approaching 1, you find the corresponding value for the function 0 0.5 or here directly by using a clever technique of first factoring and then eliminating the x minus 1 uh, portions of the problem, then we can see we get the exact same result. And that is what we mean by finding the limit of a function. It's not always easy, it's not always apparent, but if you go through either this approach or this approach, you can see there are indeed limits to functions when at first when I plug in a value, it doesn't seem to be the case. And that's how it's done.